In this video, we'll work on an example of a max-min application problem. So here's the problem. We've got a hotel that has 200 rooms. When the price is set at $75, they fill up all the rooms. But every $5 they increase the price, they get 10 rooms left empty. And there's costs indicated for empty rooms and also occupied rooms. And we want to know what price for the room will maximize the profit. So it's important to separate the information in the problem. These first couple of sentences talk about the demand, the relationship between the price of the room and the number of rooms that will actually fill. The second part of the problem talks about cost, and that's going to be important for us to figure out the profit at the end. So we've got demand up here at the top, and then we've got cost, and we're going to put that information together into profit. So there's a lot to do in this problem, but let's start by focusing on the demand information. So again, the relationship is going to be with demand between P and X. P is the price, and X is the quantity demanded, or in this case, the number of rooms. What they tell us is that when the price is $75, we're going to get 200 rooms filled up. So we can think of that as a point with X coordinate 75 and Y coordinate 200. 200 rooms. And then they tell us that if we increase the price by $5, the number of rooms that we fill will go down by 10. So we can think of that as another point, 80, comma, 190. And we can keep going like this, $85, 180, and so on. But what we're seeing here is that this is a linear relationship. If we were to plot all of these points, they would all lie on a single line. And if we can find a formula for that line, then that will give us the formula that we're looking for to find our demand equation. The potentially confusing thing here is that the x-coordinate of these points is actually the value p, the price, and the y-coordinate of these points is actually the value x, which is the quantity demanded. So we need to be very careful in the way that we think about this problem because x is going to be used in two different ways when we think about it this way. So if we're looking at the slope of this line, which is one of the things we need to do to find the equation of this line, we can use any pair of points, and we'll figure out the change in y over change in x, which again I'll put in quotation marks here, because really that's going to be change in x over change in p, because x is playing the role of the y variable, and p is playing the role of the x variable. So in this case the change in p is going to be $5, and when that price changes by $5, the x changes in the negative direction by 10. $5 increase in price causes a 10 reduction in the number of rooms. So that gives a slope of negative two rooms per dollar. So we're going to take that information and plug it into our point slope form, which is y minus y zero equals m times x minus x zero. But again, because of the way that we're thinking about this, this is really going to be x minus x zero, because x is playing the role of the y variable, equals m times p minus p zero, because p is the variable playing the role of the x. All right, so now let's plug in what we know. We figured out that the slope is negative 2. P is the variable P, and X is the variable X. For the P0 and the X0, we're just going to use the point that they gave us, which is that when the price is $75, the number of rooms that we occupy is 200. And now we're just going to simplify this. Multiply through the negative 2, we get negative 2P plus 150. Add 200 to both sides, and we get x equals negative 2p plus 350. Now remember, the reason why we wanted a demand equation is so that we could create a formula for our revenue. So revenue is price times quantity, p times x. And so initially, it might think what we would be able to do is just take this formula for x and substitute it in for the x there. But what that would do is give us a formula for revenue as a function of price. And the problem with that in this question is that we also have information about cost. And cost is always going to be a function of x, not a function of price. So we need to have revenue also be a function of x. And that means we need to solve this demand equation for p, so that when we substitute it in for p, we get a formula that just has x's in it. So we can do that pretty easily. Let's subtract 350 from both sides. Negative 2p. To get rid of the negative 2, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1 half. That's going to make my formula be a little bit simpler because it won't have a big ugly fraction in it. So negative 1 half times x minus 350 is going to be p equals negative 1 half x 
plus 175. So that's my formula for p, and remember r equals p times x. So r is going to equal negative 1 half x plus 175 times x, and if we multiply that out, we get negative 1 half x squared plus 175x. So that's our formula for revenue. And remember, we're not even really close to being done with this problem because we still have to find a formula for cost and then take our revenue and cost formulas together to create a profit formula, and then we have to maximize that. But this is a good point uh, that we've reached so far. Okay, now we're ready to work out our cost function. So if you remember from the statement of the problem, it costs us $32 for every occupied room and $20 for every empty room. So what we're looking for is a function c of x. But remember what x represents. x represents the number of rooms that we sell. So x is the number of occupied rooms. And each of those occupied rooms costs us $32. So the cost for the occupied rooms is 32x. But we also have to pay $20 for every empty room. So if we have x occupied rooms, and there are 200 total rooms, then the number of rooms that are unoccupied is 200 minus x. So we pay $20 for each of those unoccupied rooms, so 20 times the number of unoccupied rooms, 20 times 200 minus x. Let's work this out, 32x plus, that's 40,000, 4,000, sorry, minus 20x, and that gives us 12x plus 4,000. All right, so now we have a revenue formula, that's up here, and we have a cost formula down here, that's our c of x. And so finally we're ready to find our profit formula. And our profit formula is revenue minus cost. So p of x equals r of x minus c of x. And we have to be careful whenever we do this, whenever we subtract a cost function, we're subtracting the entire cost function, which means we're going to need parentheses. So we get negative 1, 20, 1 half x squared plus 175x minus parentheses 12x plus 4,000. I'll just squeeze that in the side of the screen here. So that means we have negative 1 half x squared plus 175x minus 12x minus 4,000. When we collect our like terms, we get negative 1 half x squared plus 163x minus 4,000. So there's our profit function. Okay, so now we want to maximize the profit function. And the way we maximize a function is by taking a derivative and looking for critical values. So p prime of x is going to be negative x plus 163. That's a polynomial, so it's never undefined. We set it equal to 0, and we get the solution that x equals 163. Now we need to test that value to see if it really is the max that we're looking for. The easiest way to do that here is to take the second derivative, p double prime of x is the constant negative 1, and so p double prime of 163 is negative 1. That's negative, which means we have a max, which is what we wanted. So this tells us that in order to maximize our profit, we should occupy 163 of our rooms. But if we look back at the original statement of the problem, that's not what they were asking for. They were asking for the price that maximizes the profit. But fortunately, we have an equation, a demand equation, that relates price and quantity. And that equation was p equals negative 1 half x plus 175. So now all we need to do is take our solution for x, plug it in, negative 1 half times 163 plus 175. And when we evaluate that, we get $93.50. And that's our solution. To maximize our profit, we should charge $93.50 per room.